Morton Gozo, and welcome to another edition of Love and Daily. I am your host, Jonathan Chilia, joined by my co-host, Julian Bonici. And here are your headlines for today. Three billboards appear to mark three-year anniversary of Daphne Caruana Galizia assassination. Malta passes the 1,000 COVID-19 cases mark following record rise. Malta reacts to viral slap TikTok video. Furious father confronts wardens who ordered his maskless daughter off a bus at night. And homeless Sam Castle artist begins new life after finding job. Julian, quite a mix of stories. We've got, obviously, Daphne Caruana Galizia related stories as well as homeless Sam Castle artists stories. Um, let's just jump into the first one. So obviously last night, activist group Occupy Justice did a stunt similar to a stunt that they had done two years ago where they put up a trio of red billboards in Malta streets to mark the three-year anniversary of the assassination of Daphne Caruana Galizia, which is today. Um, so these billboards were very, very interesting. They were named A Country Robbed, No Prosecutions, and No Justice. And I think one of them even appeared in Mosta, my hometown, and a couple of others have appeared around. Um, very, very interesting little stunt, you know, bringing light to this very, very important day in Malta's calendar. Yeah, no, and I think it's also important to uh, reinforce, you know, this, uh, um, just because a lot has happened in the last year, a lot of arrests and resignations and whatever, the fight for justice still goes on. So yesterday, some interesting details emerged from the Daphne project. This mostly focused on things like Melvin Thomas' pardon and the rest. Quite interestingly, it seems that Europol and even Matthew Kawana Galizia and some other people were pressuring officers to take action and arrest Toma. Quite an interesting detail, you can read all about that on um, Daphne Project and its partners like The Guardian, The Times of Malta, Le Monde. It's quite an international undertaking. Um, today on Love and Malta, we'll be airing a, a special interview with Therese Comedini Kakia, who is the Parta Jafila lawyer for Daphne Caruana Galicia's family in the case. We'll be talking about the public inquiry and things like that. And later on this evening at 8 p.m., Republica will be sharing a documentary related to um, the three year anniversary that will also be shared on Love and Malta's platform. So, set a reminder, keep, tu keep tuned. It's uh, some interesting stuff happening today. Definitely, and not only that, at around 3 o'clock today, Love and Malta will be going live from the site in Bidnia where the assassination took place. There will be a moment of silence, so stay tuned for that as well. Moving on to the next story. Yeah, so um, on to COVID. So Malta has over 1,000 active COVID-19 cases following a record high number of 112 cases recorded yesterday. Wow. There was some positive news, I suppose. There were 42 new recoveries, and the, um, the rate of testing remains actually quite high. So there were 2,481 tests conducted. The number of deaths is still at 45. Obviously, still at an alarming rate. Yeah. You know, we're seeing um, quite a large number of infections and a large number of deaths. Naturally, some unions are voicing their concern. I think um, the Union of Professional Educators mm -hmm. has even sort of called for schools to be closed. However, we have Robert Abela, on, on the other hand, who sort of, I mean, is trying to pitch a balance between health and economy. And the only measure he's really going to introduce is to accept, expect to see some more police officers on multi streets enforcing those rules. How it's going to work, I don't really know. Uh, John, what do you sort of think of all about I that? mean, you know, I, I'm really sad to see us back in this. Obviously, we're wearing masks again, socially distancing. This office, as you can see, is quite empty. You know, we're trying to do as much social distancing as possible. And I'm seeing this is affecting um, companies as well as shops and restaurants. Um, just yesterday, I went to a restaurant, and as soon as I walked in, I had to sign a book for contact tracing. So this is serious. You know, we last March and April when we were in serious lockdown, we weren't even close to the cases we have now. We have over a thousand cases. Um, and, you know, obviously there are guidelines, clubs aren't really open, even though a few clubs are open, events aren't happening. But it does seem like with nearly a hundred cases or over every single day, it does seem like we're very much in the thick of things once again. Um, and, and just yesterday, the WHO, uh, the World Health Organization, said that one in ten people in the world have gotten COVID. I mean, no, yeah, it's very, very serious stuff. So definitely keep um, safe, keep smart, follow all precautions, and don't be going out when you don't have to. Um, it's the weekend, obviously. 
the weekend ahead of us. Last weekend, I went for a walk in Slema, and I can tell you the places were packed. <laughs> Restaurants, bars, they were packed. Um, uh, and not many people wearing masks. I mean, the bartenders were, but not, 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 <laughs> not many other people. So definitely keep that in mind. Um, moving on to the next story, quite a crazy story, Julian. Mm -hmm. I, um, I don't know if you saw this, but a, a viral TikTok video um, has, has made the rounds on Maltese me uh, social media. Um, you've probably seen it yourself by now. It shows a kid, a group of kids are walking in the streets. One kid walks behind another kid and just slaps him across the head. The kid reacts, a few people are laughing, but people are not laughing now. Um, the education minister, oh, um, Owen Bonici, has now called for the director of the National Anti-Bullying Services to look into this. Um, he's obviously condemned the bullying, and it's not only him. My feed this morning was full of mothers and students and teachers complaining about this. Um, now, the kid himself has reacted and said, listen, I've got, I've got permission to slap him in the head. This is all a, a joke. Um, the, the, my friend didn't mind. He allowed me to upload it. However, you know, judging from how people are taking it, a lot of people are not seeing this as a joke. No, yeah, it seems, it seems like, it obviously, the video can be a bit sh shocking, you know, it's, I guess everyone has their own um, personal experience with, with bullying at school, you know, it's, everyone, it's a sore point for everyone, I guess people want to act about it, um, I guess just these kind of videos have to stop, I mean, just for likes, I mean, slapping someone across the head, it seems quite bloody stupid if you, if you ask me. Um, at least I see the minister take, uh, speaking out about it, you know, at least we're seeing these authorities take action at least a bit quicker than we'd like. Yeah. <laughs> at least. Um, and moving on to the next story, which yeah. also involves another young person. Yeah, and also involving mask wearing. <laughs> um, so I guess as we all know, enforcing mask wearing rules can be quite difficult as a number of wardens found out recently. So essentially, um, a teenage girl was on, on a bus um, on Saturday night and a couple of wardens went on, they saw her not wearing her mask properly, so they booted her off the bus and gave her a 50 euro fine. They thought it ended there, but um, this girl's furious father sort of went, confronted them, shouted at them, it got a bit, bit hot and heavy, you know, and a little bit of an argument ensued. Now the father came out and explained that he wasn't necessarily angry at them for issuing a fine, but more for letting his teenage daughter just off the bus and wherever, wherever it may be. I'm a bit of a mixed bag on this while I understand his position. I'm like, mm, you know, follow the rules. I can, this is actually, I mean, this is what ends up happening. No, that's exactly it. I mean, the wardens have a job to do. They are out there to enforce these rules that are there to try and keep us below the 1,000 mark, which clearly are not, is not working yet. I mean, I get the father obviously being furious. I mean, the fine is one thing, but I guess having your teenage daughter drop in the middle of Marsa in the middle of the night, well, not the middle of the night, it was 8 p.m. So, you know, getting dark, um, and I guess just getting a call from your daughter saying, listen, Dad, I'm just walking in the middle of Marsa, don't really know where I am. I've been booted off the bus because I didn't have a mask, um, and I'm looking for a bus stop. You know, I can imagine someone reacting heavily to that. At the same time, the rules are there for a reason, guys, so I'm not really gonna condemn the wardens at all. Um, even though I'm sure they really didn't appreciate <laughs> having an angry father calling them up at the end of their shift. Um, moving on to the final story for today, quite a, a positive story actually. Mm -hmm. So La Vermont has been covering um, the story of Peter Havel, who is a sandcastle artist, um, who's a homeless sandcastle artist who travels the world. Um, he's been to the Caribbean, he's been all over Europe, and he looks for beaches with really, really good sand to build these beautiful sand villages on the beach um, and he uses special techniques to make them last longer. Now he was homeless, he was living on a tent in Adira and he was you know living off donations of food and drink from people but he has now got a job and apparently he's turning a new leaf. Um, he's working as a shop assistant and apparently his very first day was good and busy. Um, a person who uh, is very very close to the case told us. Um, this is quite a positive story because obviously he's traveled the world living on beaches but from what I understand, you know, he, he didn't mind if he kind of moved up to a bit more of a leisurely, more comfortable type of setting. Um, now with a job working as a shop assistant and obviously getting good remarks and good feedback, he might soon become a homeowner in Malta? Yeah, it's, yeah, it's, no, it's always a really nice story, this, you know, seeing 
someone gets off their feet, you know, being recognized even for quite amazing things they're doing, you know. So a nice positive story to end the day. Just another reminder that we've got an interview with um, Therese Komedinikakia coming up soon. We're also going to go live from the site where Daphne Caruana Galizia was assassinated at 3 p.m. and we'll also be airing a short documentary from Republica at 8 p.m. Uh, stay tuned and have a day full of loving. Thank you.